Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. I'm super excited. My new Bamboo Lab A1 arrived. This video is about being an early adopter for the A1 and what it is that you need to use this printer to make good airplane parts. Please like and subscribe to our channel and check out our website where you can find files for these models as well as slicing configurations for different slicers, materials, and even a test part to try printing. So I am not affiliated with Bamboo Lab in any way, but I am a total fan. I bought my X1 Carbon more than six months ago and I've been running it non-stop since. I've been 3D printing for a long time and the Bamboo is definitely not my first and only printer. These well-used old units are now collecting dust. The X1C part quality, speed, and ease of use, it's just amazing. Perfect? No, but well thought out and well executed design. The bamboo also prints the foaming lightweight PLA material really well, but only one part at a time and at a slower speed to get the best quality, which is still twice as fast and leaps and bounds better quality than the older machine. And my latest file updates make them even faster and better. I've been printing so much of the foaming material, I thought it might be nice to have another bamboo printer. Getting another X1C just for printing foaming materials would probably be a little overkill. The P1P and the P1S were the likely candidates, and the A1 Mini is just too small. Well, I was on the Bamboo Lab website buying some Bamboo Aero the morning that the new A1 came out. A regular size A1, the same print volume as an X1C. You know, I rarely buy anything over $20 without doing some research. It was a bit of an impulse buy, but man, the X1 is so good. How bad could this be? And if all I print on it is this foaming material with this quality, it will be well worth it. Well, I got it out of the box and I put it together. It was super easy, good instructions, nice design, clean lines, touchscreen, and a speaker? It seems well thought out, even from the back. Clean lines. Nice details. Easy to read and intuitive user interface. And even a combination of hard and squishy feet on the bottom for stability. It comes with the bamboo textured PEI plate that also fits the X1 and P1 printers. If you pay attention to the little tabs in the back corners, the build plate's pretty easy to install and maybe even easier than the enclosed printers because you can see what you're doing. Being a mechanical engineer, the filament cutter is pretty fun, although it rarely makes it into the box. So now let's load some filament and run some test prints. So at the time of making this video, Bamboo Studio is the only slicer with the new A1 profile. In the Add a Printer section, you can click on it, as well as all the other new printers that they've added to the Bamboo Studio. I have a well-tested custom filament and process profile for the X1, and I was hoping to use that with the A1. Switching between the X1 and P1 printer, you could keep your custom filament and process profiles just like Perusa Slicer. But when I select the A1 printer profile, these presets I had created are gone, and I have to recreate them and start all over again. Very Cura-like. Now I know they did make a big update in the 1.8.2 to change some things to make sharing printer profiles and other processes easier and I just haven't figured it out yet. So we just transferred the settings over to a new custom filament and process setting for the A1. These are the same settings I've been using on my X1. Figured it'd be a good place to start. 
After slicing, I turned on all of the line types and there's this strange travel move that goes to the edge of the build plate. So I looked it up and this travel move has something to do with the time-lapse camera and taking a picture between every layer. There's no way to turn it off. And setting it to this smooth option makes it even worse because it puts in a prime tower. Uh, I have a feeling that this is going to go away, but there's no way to get rid of it right now. So I set it up to just do some simple PLA printing on this textured PEI build plate. Let's print it. So it was a nice quick print, but I did notice that near the build plate, there was a little bit of warpage and I think it was due to too much heat because the PEI likes to be at a higher temperature and 65 is just too high. So then I turned the temperature down to 45 and well, it didn't stick. So I know I can add some adhesive and make it better, but you know, for 23 bucks, I can just buy another cold plate and I know it'll work. So you do need some kind of adhesive on the cold plate. Bamboo Labs supplied the X1 with this glue stick and the cold plate. And once you get a nice buildup of glue on it, it actually is kind of like seasoned and you can just print on it over and over again. I've also tried this stuff from Vision Miner. It's nano polymer adhesive and you just do some drops on it and wipe it on with a paper towel. Works pretty good, but for some of the foaming stuff, it's a little too aggressive. But for PLA, it works great. So this is just regular PLA, regular PLA speeds, no ludicrous speeds or anything like that. And it's still four panels in the same time it usually takes to print one. All right, so here are the finished PLA parts and they pop right off the build plate. And they turned out really nice. Mm -hmm. They almost looked identical to the X1 parts. No warping, nice skins, nice features. Quality PLA parts. Now let's try the foaming stuff. So for my profile for foaming PLA, it runs different temperature, different speed, and this avoid crossing walls setting because I still use retracts. This avoid crossing wall makes the tool head travel along the already printed wall and eliminates or reduces the stringing and oozing of the foaming materials. It's similar to combing mode in Cura. I try to keep as much of the travels in the skin and not on the surface of the airfoil. This seems to be a core element of the slicer as Purusha Slicer handles these travel moves the same way. So then I was kind of surprised and disappointed with the first slicing results in Bamboo Studio for the new A1 printer with my foaming profile. It's kind of a mess. To compare, I use the same part process and filament settings using the A1 mini printer profile and the travel moves are much better. All of the travel moves in the skin are time-lapse camera related. The Orca Slicer Mini profile looks much better too. Unfortunately, Orca Slicer doesn't have the A1 regular profile yet. So I'll have to use Bamboo Studio for now. So I'll go ahead and print this in the Bamboo Arrow foaming PLA and see how it turns out. You can clearly see the outer skin travel defects in the finished part in the A1 foaming PLA and they match. It matches the skin surface travel moves exactly. The part is usable with a little bit of sanding, but far from the quality I was hoping for. Definitely not as good as the part sliced for the X1. 
but better than the Z wobble marked parts from the older printer. So this weird surface travel move also does it on the test part. So if you want to download and try it out for yourself, you can. And compare it to the A1 Mini and the X1 and how they slice. Maybe there is a setting I got wrong. So the new A1 printer mechanically is the printer I wanted. And I believe the software will catch up with how good this printer can be. And that's why this video is part one. I'm hoping that very soon this bug in the travel removal setting will be resolved and I can make a part two video with a proper filament and process settings for the new A1 printer and the foaming PLA, which is the video I really wanted to make. I would love to know if there's a way to turn off this time-lapse video travel added to the A1 slicing. I think it is affecting the overall results and it doesn't need to be in there. Let me know in the comments if you have any ideas. I will definitely have a follow-up to this video. If you like the video, please like and subscribe. And check out our website for more information about printing and flying RC gliders. See you next time.